Hello language learners, I'm happy to see you here again. Last time we were talking about grammatical genders and about me and my husband making mistakes because of the differences in grammatical genders in English, German and Russian. And today I want to share with you common mistakes made by Russian people when they are speaking English. And I also want to share with you some thoughts about uh, attitude of people who are learning a uh, foreign language towards mistakes. Uh, for me personally, this is a really relevant and important topic. I hope for you too and enjoy the video. When I studied in university, I really liked an example that our teacher gave us. Uh, she just said, imagine that one hand is a language and another hand is another language. And when you try to compare languages or to translate from one language to another, you should try to make them as close as possible. I mean, they should coincide as close as possible. So most of the time it will be like this or like this but it never will be like this. You will never find all the same structures and vocabulary in one language and another one so that they will coincide like this. And sometimes languages are closer to each other and you will have just a tiny bit, tiny difference. And sometimes it can be like this or like this if they're really different. And many times it's the case with vocabulary and even with a simple one. In English you have a hand, this part is a hand and this part is arm and in German you also have hand and arm, very close. And in Russian we refer to the whole one. The whole one has the name and we call it ruka and there are specific terms for this and this but mostly in everyday life we'll refer to all of this as Ruka. And many times when I speak English, I just say hand when I mean this part. So, um, oh, my hand hurts. And my husband always smiles and says, no, your hand does not hurt, your arm hurts. When Russian speaking people learn English or German or uh, other language that has articles, we tend to have problems with articles. We just don't know you how to use them. We don't have them in Russian and this concept is just not in our head from our childhood. And when a child comes to school at the age of six or seven and teacher tells him about uh, existence of articles in English and that they are definite and indefinite but they are not translated, uh, uh, it's it's really confusing not only for children but also for grown-ups and then we start to use them uh, either nowhere or everywhere or uh, just mix definite and indefinite ones and only after a um, long time uh, being exposed to English when we when we are reading listening speaking in English we kind of try to learn how to use them just according to our feeling as native speakers do. But that's still not quite the same, so many times we tend to worry about this or that article. And one more common mistake is reflexive pronouns, as myself, yourself, himself. As I told you uh, early on in this video, languages don't coincide like this, and uh, the same with reflexive. Uh, sometimes we have reflexive in Russian, but in English there is no reflexive or vice versa. And one of the most frequent and kind of embarrassing mistakes uh, is the verb to feel. In Russian we use reflexives there and in English we don't use them. So the correct sentence in English I feel bad today, in Russian a Russian speaker would say I feel myself bad today. And when you tell people that the thing that they have just said uh, is actually meaning to touch yourself, um, they are really surprised and feel a tiny bit embarrassed sometimes, but then they remember it for a really long time. And one more interesting group of mistakes is connected with false friends, as they're called in linguistics. The words that sound the same in different languages, but the meaning is different. And there are a lot of false friends in different pairs of languages, and I will just give you an example of uh, some of them in Russian and English. Very frequent one is magazine. In English, magazine is this, and in Russian, magazine is shop. So many times I hear something like, um, I will go to the magazine and buy some apples. Uh, you can also hear from a Russian person something like my dad works at the furniture fabric. Fabric? Furniture fabric? 
The thing is, you know that in English fabric is this, but in Russian fabric is factory. And one more word that I want to tell you about that is a false friend, not in the English-Russian uh, pair of languages, but in the German-English pair, is the word that I encountered just yesterday in my book and it amazed me. Uh, the sentence was something like uh, Sie alle nahmen das gleiche Gift. And uh, I translated it as they all took the same gift. But that did not make sense according to the context of the story. So I started to check uh, words in the dictionary and the word gift is not actually a gift. In German that means poison. I guess I was surprised so much because uh, many times the words are somehow connected a tiny bit or at least you can imagine how they are connected uh, like a factory and fabric I told you about. Maybe they were producing a lot of fabric on the factory and this is how we um, got the word uh, fabrika in Russian, that means factory, but with the poison and gift they are just two opposite words. But wait, maybe in the old times when they were trying to poison a king or an emperor or somebody like this, they, they gave uh, poison as a gift. Does it make any sense? Maybe. I think it makes sense. And as I started to talk about English and German, one more common mistake that a lot of people make, I struggle with it a lot. Uh, we know that in English uh, the sh sound is mostly uh, made by the combination of those two letters. And in German to make the sh sound you need to use those three letters. And many times I'm forgetting about this and then I'm writing something like this or this. And in general in German there are a lot of words with this sh sound and you need to use three letters. And actually in my new surname there are two times this sh letter combination. I need to learn that and not make mistakes there per accident. But to be honest I think uh, I'm already quite good at that. And I told you in the beginning that I want to ramble a tiny bit about mistakes. I think just learning German and uh, trying to improve my English made me think about mistakes a lot, how to approach them and that uh, our learning, learning a foreign language or learning anything in our life is just the way of a lot of mistakes that we are trying to realize and find the way to not make them uh, in the future. And I just try to keep a positive attitude and not to worry too much about mistakes and I keep repeating uh, in my head that learning something is uh, just the same as the baby that learns how to walk and uh, the baby falls a lot and this is the only way for him to learn uh, walking properly. And the same for us learning anything, a language or just any skill. Uh, it's just the way of making the mistakes and uh, improving on the way and the most important part and the most difficult one is not to get frustrated and not to put yourself down a lot and just to accept that mistakes is something that will happen and this is something that will happen a lot. And I want to finish this video with a quote that I really like. When you make mistakes there are only three things that you should ever do. Uh, admit it, learn from it and don't repeat it. And I wish for you and me that making mistakes will not stop us from learning something new. Bye!